forest. Wood. Carbon. We have one resource which can be used for almost everything, and at the same time, reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Carbon can be found in all living material. Through photosynthesis, the energy from the sun, carbon dioxide and water is transformed to carbohydrates, which are the material for tree growth. Through this process, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is stored as carbon compounds in trees and forest land. Carbon dioxide is also stored in wood products from the forest, such as the house you live in or the book you read. When the products from the forest come to an end and are used as fuel or decompose, the carbon dioxide comes back to the atmosphere but the same amount of carbon dioxide will be taken up by the growing trees. Swedish wood has many uses, but this film is about solid wood products. The first step, and the most important part of the Swedish forest industry, is Swedish forestry, of which almost 100% is certified according to FSC or PEFC. Swedish timber has created work and wealth in Sweden for a long time, and accounts for a major part of Swedish exports. Scattered all over Sweden, there are many small and large sawmills, which create jobs in small cities and communities all over the country. To deliver timber, one harvests forest every day in Sweden. But if one should harvest the same amount in the future, one must create new forest after harvesting. In Sweden, 80 million cubic meters of forest is harvested annually. But if one thinks about the forest resources during the last 100 years, the annual growth is 120 million cubic meters. This means that our standing volume of wood increases by 40 million cubic meters annually. This is similar to about 800,000 trucks with timber. The growth in the forest in Sweden since the beginning of the 1900s has been greater than the annual cut, which means that the forest resources have steadily increased and it will continue to do so in the coming years. The amount of hardwood has also increased. There is a potential for further expansion parallel to more environment consideration. Here we see Nornen, the orchids of the spruce forest. Properly managed wood is perhaps the best material in the world and is a renewable resource for coming generations. The properties of a stem vary between species and within trees. If we look into a pine, we will find three different types of wood, all with different properties. The first 15 to 20 years is juvenile wood. The inner part also has hardwood, which is dead cells with substances which make the wood resistant to decomposition. Outside the hardwood comes the living sapwood, which transports water and nutrients to the tree. The amount of hardwood decreases higher up in the tree, but the big difference between a butt log and a top log is the amount of knots.
These tree logs come from the same tree, but we get very different types of wood. In the big butt log, we get clear wood without knots, which can be used for woodwork and floors, etc. In the middle log, we will find dead knots. This is bigger dead branches under the living crown. Wood from this log will be used for constructions and packing. In the top log, we will find fresh living knots from the living crown. The wood from this type of log will be used for glue lamb, floors, etc. When harvesting the forest, one considers the wood properties of the different log types. A lot of research is going on in this field. For example, at Skogforsk, the Forestry Research Institute of Sweden, and at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences in Uppsala. The harvest is carried out in sensitive areas mainly in winter time when the ground is frozen to minimize the damage on the ground. There are different types of harvest. Thinning is carried out when the trees are between 30 to 80 years old. This is done to open up the forest and gives room for the best trees to grow. When the trees are grown to the dimension and quality one is looking for, the final harvest will be carried out. The age of the trees will be about 80 to 120 years. A harvester is a very advanced machine with computers and electronics. The stem will be measured during the delimbing and will be cut following a computerized price list based on dimension and quality. The forwarder takes the saw logs, pulp wood and energy logs out of the forest to the landing. The harvester and the forwarder are big machines and used improperly, they will cause great damage to the ground. However, with knowledge, one can minimize the damage and optimize the harvest. At Skogforsk, there is a harvest simulator for testing and evaluating different harvesting methods. The wood will be transported from the forest by trucks, pulp wood to the pulp mills, saw logs to the sawmills, and energy wood to the fuel plant. When the wood arrives at the sawmill, it will be measured for payment. The logs are graded by independent log graders. The logs are then sorted in classes related to diameter, length and quality for payment. There could be visible defects on the log surface, which indicate defects inside the log, such as knots, rot, or other damage. But not everything is visible to the naked eye. So nowadays, a lot of mills have x-ray scanners to check the internal properties of the logs. Through this, we get indications of the amount of hardwood, knot structure, and properties. The dream has always been to be able to look into the logs so you know what you buy and how you can utilize the log as well as how to saw it. For this reason, there has been more than 30 years of experimentation, research and testing of different ways and technical methods for how best to x-ray logs. Lulio Technical University in Sheleftu has been a leading player in this research thanks to a CT x-ray scanner. By this technique, the same as in our hospitals, one gets a full and complete picture of the inside of a log. This research has led to simple scanning techniques, which are now found in many sawmills. The Swedish sawmills can be seen as leading in this field. The reason to sort logs in batches is to better optimize the saw patterns in relation to the log properties. By batching the sawing of logs with similar properties, the yield and efficiency can be more effective.
During the summer when the logs can be attacked by fungi, one has to sprinkle the logs. Today, the sprinkling system is climate responsive, so the water is minimized with respect to existing weather. The storage is due to the harvesting being reduced during the summer and more concentrated during the winter. It sometimes happens that the summer storage will already be built up in January by so-called snow storage, when frozen logs will be covered by snow and above with sawdust and bark.